presentation of Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are St. Louis. It's Labor Day and a beautiful afternoon for baseball at Bush Stadium. Game one, the Brewers and the Cardinals. Recently, the Cardinals have gone 4-0 in the last four games against Milwaukee. Great run production, and the pitching has been very solid. Along with Al Robosky, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Welcome to Cardinals baseball. Al, we'll see if that recent success carries over to today. That's right. It just seems like the Cardinals the only team that can beat Milwaukee in the National League. And they have to do that again. They have to repeat. They have to sweep because Milwaukee, their magic number is down to 13. And when we come back, it's a look at Randy Wolf and Jake Westbrook. Albert is in the lineup, ready to have a little fun. Baseball coming up today. Could go and home runs were part of that game. Raphael Fercal had a leadoff home run, number 28 of his career. And of course, Jeff, Jake Westbrook gave one right back as Corey Hart hit his fifth leadoff home run of the career, seventh overall. But in the end, the Cardinals would hold on. It would be an 8 3 victory for St. Louis. And at that time, a sweep of Milwaukee and maybe a little hope. Well, today, they start nine and a half games back. A look back at some of the Labor Day memories. With Tony La Russa as the skipper of the Cardinals. That's next on Fox Sports Midwest.
16 Labor Days as skipper for the St. Louis Cardinals, some of which have provided great Cardinal memories. For five great Labor Day flashbacks during the Tony La Russa era, here is Pat Paris. Mark McGuire captivated the nation in 1998 as he chased Roger Maris's home run record. On Labor Day, Big Mac hit number 61, tying the Yankee legend. Great talkers in baseball. The last Cardinals no-hitter was on Labor Day a decade ago. It was rookie Bud Smith who became the third Cardinals rookie and 24th Major League rookie to throw a no-hitter. The lefty gave up four walks but no hits and needed 134 pitches to finish the gem. In 2005, Albert finally won his first MVP thanks to clutch home runs like that one. His three-run shot on Labor Day broke a 2-2 tie with the Cubs in the eighth inning and helped St. Louis make the postseason for a second straight year. Chris Carpenter never seemed to labor when he threw a complete game one-hit shutout in Milwaukee two years ago. He needed just 99 pitches to collect his 28th career complete game. Here's a ground ball. Schumacher there to first. What a gem by Carpenter today. Three to nothing and a one-hit shutout for the ace of the Cardinals. Last year, the Cardinals once again found themselves in Milwaukee for Labor Day. And once again, they came away with a big win thanks to Yadier Molina. And it is gone. Downtown St. Louis, and it's game number one, Milwaukee and the Cardinals. And let's take a look at the three games set from Miller Park just a week ago. One, two, swing and a miss. He blew it by Ryan Braun. And a great pitch by Edwin Jackson. Very sharp. Round ball to second. Eats up Hairston, and he doesn't even get for call. There's a line drive to center field, and it's down. It's a base hit. Okendo is holding Schumacher. 0-2 pitch, base hit to right field for Jackson. 
Schumacher scores. Bolted hard to left. Back goes Braun. He's at the track. A leadoff home run for Rafael Burkal. Ball hit hard in the center field. This ball is gone. This is one left center field. That is going to be over the head of Craig. Braun's got a chance to score here. The throw. No throw. Braun falls down. And he is out. Oh, he had it inside the Parker right in front of him. Bases loaded. This is a long drive to left. It's in the corner. Are you kidding me? A grand slam home run for the Cardinal pitcher. Squeezes it for a Cardinal victory. There's a long drive to right field. Hart is back. He's done it again. There's a long drive to left. This ball is gone. Way out of here. This ball is hit deep to right field. Hart is back to the wall. Grand slam for Albert Pujols. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. By Chevy, see your Mid America Chevy dealers. By Dobbs Tire Auto Centers, number one in quality tires and expert auto service. And by Steak and Shake, life needs flavor. They start them young here in St. Louis. Generations of fans have come through the turnstiles. And here at Bush Stadium this year, the club is trending towards 3.1 million fans yet again this season. Redbirds start play today, nine and a half games back in Milwaukee, eight and a half in the wild card. As you saw in the pregame show, the Brewers schedule after this brief three game set, not very easy. That's where you were hoping the Cardinals would really capitalize on that sweep and maybe get it to six and a half or five and a half games but that's not the case. And one thing that Brewers have is they have a consistent starting staff. Every one of their starters has at least ten wins and at times their offense has been a little lackluster but they can almost daily count on an outstanding starting performance and then they got good bullpen at the end. This is Corey Hardy who's hitting 284 and he taps one foul no balls and two strikes. Well, he started on the disabled list. He had an oblique strain, missed the first 22 games. But since they moved him to the lineup, you know, in the leadoff spot, he's really responded and has a 16 game hitting streak right now. The Brewers have been the hottest team in baseball. They've only lost eight times in their last 32 games, five of those to St. Louis. 
and they've been much better on the road. First half they were terrible on the road, but now have gone 13 and three in their last 16 games away from home. Yeah, there was no rhyme or reason as to why they were losing two out of every three games on the road, and they're make up for it now. And it's a long time for the Cardinals. There's that 12 game hitting streak you speak of. And a swing and a miss. Good start here for Westbrook. Milwaukee is loaded in the middle of their lineup. It's Hart, Niger Morgan, and Ryan Braun in the first. Then Fielder, Green, Harrison Jr., Kateris, Betancourt, and Randy Wolf. Well, sometimes Jake Westbrook tries too hard, so they want him to really relax, take a deep breath out there, and cut down on his walks. And that gets his pitch count up really high. When Westbrook, you know, throws six innings or more, the Cardinals are 12 and 2. But too many times he's got the pitch count up so high he doesn't get through six. 2 and 0 on Niger Morgan. Former national, former pirate. They really like what he's done in Milwaukee. He's hit 341 this year against St. Louis, over 300 this season. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. Late spring training trade brought Niger over in. Finally, he and his alter ego have found a home. P plush. And there's an extra base hit. Morgan can really run on his way to second base. In there safely, one out double. Freeze was playing way in, guarding against the bunch, and then he just slapped the ball inside David and the third base bag. Had no shot at it. And then, as you said, the way he can run. There you see where the positioning where David Freeze, no chance for him. Holiday actually got to that ball and got it back in very quickly, but at great speed, it's a double. Here's Ryan Braun. Now leading the league and hitting at 335. He has passed. Jose Reyes of the Mets, 26 home runs, 94 driven in. Should have 27 home runs if he didn't stumble going around third. And the inside Parker that recall wasn't even going to make a play at home, but then when he turned and got the ball from center fielder Alan Craig, he saw the Braun had stumbled twice, and so he threw home, and and they got him in a rundown and executed it perfectly. Outfield deep and straight away. That's a little high. Two balls and no strikes. And the Cardinal pitching has really handled Ryan Braun pretty well. He's only batting 224 this season with one home run and six RBIs. And there you see the top of the leaderboard with average. A 2 0 pitch to Braun. Two one foul back two and two the pitching matchups for the rest of this series tomorrow night Cal Loesch 12 and eight against Giovanni Gallardo Cardinals roughed him up last week. Then Wednesday night good one Chris Carpenter and Zach Grinke Grinke 14 and five this year. It's 74 degrees our game time temperature. Two two pitch. Ron waves at it, strikes out. Start for Westbrook. A pair of strikeouts. Defense behind Jake Westbrook. Holiday, Shane Robinson to start in center, then Alan Craig. David Freeze. Raphael for Kyle, Ryan Terrio, and Albert Pujols along the infield, and it's Westbrook and Molina. The battery, and that's brought to you by Dobbs. So, Sugar Shane Robinson, who was a guest on the pregame show yesterday, gets his first start in center. Intentional walk here to fielder Taylor Green, a third baseman, is on deck. Dan Green put up really big numbers at AAA, and it just seems like every level he's been an all star. He got his first major league hit against Westbrook. And that was in the 
believe it was the first pitch he even saw at the major league level. And then he got three straight hits. And he's, they say he's had eight play appearances and he's hit the ball on the nose seven times. Cardinals uh, moments ago made an announcement concerning more call ups. Michael Clayto is here. Shane Robinson who you just saw. Cardinals uh, tomorrow will add Tyler Green Tony Cruz and I think this one's going to be fun to watch to see how he performs Adron Chambers I'm told he's a terrific athlete and he'll get the call up tomorrow. And going into the season Chambers very good athlete very raw talent. He's a guy that could be you know he's develops. Casey McGee, the regular third baseman, is 0 for 10 against Westbrook and really having a down season, so Green gets the opportunity. Two on, two outs, 1 0 pitch. Takes a pretty healthy cut, too. It's 86 miles an hour, and it looked like it was 96. You don't want to see Jake Westbrook live at the top of the strike zone. Two strikes, one and two. That's where you want to see him throw the ball. Jake has second best sinker. And there you saw more of an off speed pitch for him. Took a little more off it, but he induces the second most ground balls in the National League. The stadium is filled up. It's a beautiful afternoon for baseball. And here's a one two. Swing and a miss. He got him to chase it again. So he strikes out the side here in the top of the first Cardinals coming up. Milwaukee strands two. Cardinals lineup for Kyle Terrio and Pujols. This is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Then Holiday Freeze and Molina. Craig Robinson and Westbrook on the mound. It is the lefty Randy Wolf. Well, he's trying to rebound from his last start against the Cardinals. It was probably his worst start of the year. And he likes to get you to chase the high pitches. And he also will read the batter. If you're looking over, over the plate. Looking for a ball away, he'll run that cutter in on you. For Kyle on the first pitch, pops it foul and out of play. Kyle hit uh, 27th leadoff home run. It was 29th, I, I think, off of Randy. He hit two back to back. One was 28, one was 29. Leadoff home runs in his career. That's the kind of jump start the Cardinals need right now. Set up inside. Jammed him. 
0 and 2. And that's a cutter he gets inside and if you're looking inside then he'll throw a change up or something away. And a lot of times that with two strikes will get you to try and chase a high fastball. Fourth time since August 3rd that Randy Wolf gets a start against St. Louis. Jammed him again. It's popped up. And no play. Great hustle there by Taylor Green. <laughs> One of his teammates just got a shower. That's LaTroy Hawkins. Watch as Green gives it foul and try. He slides and kicks all the dust right into the face of some of his Brewer teammates. John Shelby, one of the coaches, T Bone got the worst of that. <laughs> Here's an 0 2 pitch, two for Cowell. Trying to pound that strike zone on the inside part. Now, watch here. <laughs> Look at 31. <laughs> John Shelby. He's one of the nicest guys in the world, so I'm sure he had a smile on his feet. His face, and he had dirt in his teeth. Here's a 1 2 pitch. He's doing his job, making this pitcher work a little bit. Have to wonder how much playing time Tyler Green will get once he gets called up. I was just, terrific numbers down in Memphis. I was just thinking the same thing. You know, we've all seen Tyler Green over the years here, but they say he's a different player at Triple A. First pitch that we've seen to the outside portion of the play, two for Cal. Guitarist. Randy's catchers a couple times is set up away, but the ball is cut in. Tyler appeared in 47 games for the Cardinals and hit 196. Then he goes down to Memphis, hits 323, 14 home runs, drives in 43, 19 seals in just 66 games. And Dan, you talk to teammates of Tyler Green at AAA, and they just say he can do it all. Foul ball. But when he comes up here, he just really struggles with all aspects of the game, defensively, offensively, just plays so tight exactly. that it's just impossible for him to, you know, have good results. And hopefully this time, you know, you know, maybe things will be different. This will be pitch number nine coming from Randy Wolf, first batter of the game, Rafael Fercal. Ground ball to short. Betancourt makes the play. Well, he made him work. Even though he didn't get a hit, as you said, he made him work and did his job. Ron Morgan and Hart in the outfield. Green, Betancourt, Harrison Jr. and Fielder along the infield. And it's Randy Wolf and George Kateris. The battery today, and that's presented by Dobbs. Ryan Terrio at second base. Really hit on the key point with Tyler Green. He comes up here and he plays tight. They just want to see him relax and maybe get an extended period of time in which he makes some starts and see if he puts something together. And yet, Tony La Russa would like to see more for call and a lot of uh, talk that there's a fly ball to Niger Morgan. Glasses. Also shading from the sun, and there's two away. But for call, a lot of talk about not accepting his option because it's about twelve and a half million dollars. But trying to work something out and see if he can bring him back. Here. Notice when we were in Milwaukee, watch how Nigel Morgan makes sure the corner outfielders know how many outs. <laughs> There was even more to it after that. <laughs> Pujols rips it fair and down into the corner. Extra bases for Albert. Two out double for Pujols. Came in hitting 295. I don't think there's any doubt in our minds that he will hit 300. Been on a tear of late and he'll have to continue, but September's always been a good month for him. 
in his quest for 300. He's already got his 30 plus home runs. He leads the National League with 34. And now he's, he's got 15 RBIs to acquire for the 300 for the 11th consecutive time. So two outs, runner at second base, and here's Matt Holliday. Owns three of the 21 home runs against Milwaukee this year. And here's a great stat for Randy Wolf. He's held the fourth place hitter, the cleanup hitter, to only seven hits all season long. Wow. You can add to it. Holiday lines out to right. No score after an inning of play. He's an important stat what you do with runners in scoring position and that was last week Milwaukee went three for 21 they were 0 for 2 in the first inning Cardinals 0 for 1 but uh, last week 8 for 20. There's what's happened today. That's our Toyota keys to the game. And the reasons why the Cardinals lost the series to Cincinnati was that same stat not hitting with runners in scoring position. There's Hairston. Pick up for Milwaukee. Real solid pick up for them too. Ricky Weeks dealing with an injured ankle, so Hairston steps in. Overall hitting 272. It's at 429 against the Cardinals this season. One ball, one strike. Jake Westbrook another year on his contract after this season. And really the starting five if it stays intact. No issues there as far as where they are contractually. With the exception of Chris Carpenter. And the Cardinals hold a 15 million dollar option on Carpenter and John Moselock has stated publicly they want to have him back and let's see if they either pick up that option or tear it up and maybe rework it and try to do something even more long term. See Kyle Loesch there. He has another year in his contract. So, you know, they at times have talked about Zepchinski going the rotation, but we really aren't. We really do already have five with picking up Wainwright's options. Kataris looks at a strike. One ball, one strike. Getting 273. Betancourt is on deck. If you're in the shade today, it's actually a little bit cool. We haven't said that very often uh, here at Bush Stadium this summer. We were talking yesterday about a 30 degree drop. That's right. From Saturday to Sunday.
This catcher hit for the cycle earlier this year and then he was rewarded with an off day the next day. Didn't play. <laughs> Jody Garrett did the same thing for them a year ago. Same result. That's strikeout number four for Westbrook. You usually don't think of Westbrook as a strikeout pitcher. But off to a great start, but what you do want to see is ground balls. Hard to explain why Westbrook has has a six ERA here at home. Yuneski Betancourt takes a pitch a little bit low. The 259 last year with Kansas City. Pops it up to the right side. Albert will give it a look. And it's out of play. He was included in the Grinky trade from Cuba. Unesky. That's kind of uh, the Russian influence in his first name. One ball, one strike. It's sharply to third and past David Freeze. Betancourt will stop at second base. Second double of the day for Milwaukee. Watch your lips right here. Trying to backhand and then the ball came up on David Freeze down into the corner. Watch it bounce, bounce. And then all of a sudden a high bounce over the glove. Brought to you by Plaza Tire Service. That replay brings in the pitcher Randy Wolf, who's hitting a buck sixty. Does have five career home runs, so don't don't lay one in. Last year, a 13 game winner, but was the victim of five blown saves, the most of the team. They've only used six starters all season long. Remember, Narvison injured himself trying to repair his glove. Used a pair of scissors and cut his, cut one of his fingers or thumb. Now you talk about how Wolf can swing the bat a little bit. He had 19 hits a season ago, which was tops in the National League among pitchers. He and Dan Heron. That was funny. Now, Jake Westbrook has the second most RBIs in the National League by a pitcher. He doubled it with his grand slam in Milwaukee. He has eight RBIs now, and that's second most. Two outs, runner at second. Two one pitch. Westbrook able to get a glove on it and save the run. Base hit, Randy Wolf. Ball was hit well enough that it, if it got by Westbrook cleanly, it would have gone into center field, and as you said, it would have been one nothing Milwaukee. Ball out away from you. They can get that good extension and that's the ball that you learn as a pitcher. If you don't want to be dodging bullets on the mound you learn how to pitch inside. Two outs runners at first and third for Corey Hart the leadoff man. Unique dynamic of this lineup that you touched upon, Al, is having a guy like Hart at the top of your lineup, and then Morgan, who typically would be a leadoff man batting second. You can do a lot of things with that combination. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. He's got 23 home runs and missed nearly the first month of the season. Got a 12 game hitting streak against the Cardinals. He's had three different double figure hitting streaks this season and currently is in a 16 game hitting streak. On a bowling green, Kentucky. Two balls and one strike. 11th round pick by Milwaukee in 2000. 
and he's hit 345 home runs and 14 RBIs against the Cardinals this season. Haven't been really Braun or Fielder. It's been Corey Hart. McGee had a big game against us. It's sharply to short for Powell. What a play here. Fires to first and not in time. Base hit RBI. One nothing Milwaukee. That's what you, Rafael for call brings you is that tremendous range and then he still has a shotgun arm. So for Kyle tries to get it and scramble up there throw it out there. Albert a soft pick. Extends his hitting streak to 17 games. Now it's Niger Morgan who doubled. First time up. Two outs, two on. Morgan with a high fly ball down the right field line. Out of play. Niger with three home runs this year. You're talking about his alter ego that has come with him to Milwaukee. I don't remember him ever being like this when he was with Pittsburgh. Well, I talked to Steve Blass, and that was his first major league stop was Pittsburgh, and he said he tried to do it there, but it just didn't go over well. And then remember, then he kind of was more noted for getting under the skin of the opposition. You know, remember he hit. An elk threw an elbow at uh, Brian Anderson, young Cardinal catcher. It was not going to be a play at the plate, but he just went ahead and threw an elbow into the side of of Anderson, and a couple incidents like that got under the skin. But he's been a model citizen. Both of them, T. Plush and Niger, <laughs> have been good for Milwaukee. Spoils the pitch, hits it out of play. The Cardinals have trailed in every game of this homestand thus far. Play catch up every single game. Niger Morgan played junior hockey with the Blues Barrett Jackman. I asked Barrett about it and he said, Yeah, good guy, nice guy, tough, you might imagine. No issues. Yeah, but what about T plush? I don't think he knew about T. <laughs> Last time Milwaukee was in town, I believe it was a weekend, and there were a lot of two plus shirts. There's a lot of Milwaukee fans uh, traveled well with them. One two pitch outside, two and two. Talk about that pitch count from Westbrook, and it's already up to 48. Pitching here in the second inning. And this is his fourth start of the year against the Brewers. He's one and two ERA of 4.50 against Milwaukee. The 2 2. A swing and a miss. Molina has to hurry. And they get Morgan by a step. Milwaukee strands two, but they pick up an early lead. It's 1 nothing.
and the seat you want and the freedom to choose where you'd like to sit. StubHub is the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals. Big, big crowd here today on a beautiful afternoon. Tomorrow there are $15 seats available, pavilion level. Some of the better seats here at Bush Stadium, only for $15. That's tomorrow and Wednesday as well. You know, we mentioned the pitch count for Westbrook in September. It never should be an issue for any team with call-ups getting into bullpens. But the point being, you don't want to see that every fifth day. No, you don't. And see David Freeze, that average just hovering at 300. Already set career highs in home runs and RBIs. And the constant question with David Freeze, what kind of numbers would he put up? If he could stay healthy. No doubt about it. He's one of the few Cardinals that have hit left-handed pitching well. And that goes for Randy Wolf. As Freeze has a 357 average, 5 for 14. And all five hits were singles. One ball, one strike on David. Took something off it. Two strikes. Atlanta has the Phillies for three, so not only trying to look at what you could do possibly with Milwaukee and pull off a miracle, same could be said with chasing the Atlanta Braves in the wild card. And Atlanta will see them this weekend. Here's a 2 2 pitch. The one thing, Dan, is. They're actually closer to Cincinnati in third place than right. they are to the wild card or to Milwaukee. And the Cardinals need to just start picking up play, pace. <laughs> Yesterday he got good starting pitching and Tony put the blame on the offense. Felt like a lot of the players just felt like they should have done more than they did offensively, scoring two runs. A 3 2 pitch, spoiled by David Freeze. And when Jackson, who pitched another very good ball game, gave up two runs before he recorded an out, but then he shut him down for seven innings after that. And he's probably in line to make a lot of money. It's not a very large group of starting pitchers that are going to be free agents. So he'll probably be third or fourth best on that list. End of the game. He was still throwing hard. Time is called. But one of the reasons why I think the Cardinals are going to fall short is they just haven't had that consistent starting pitching. Did their best to compensate the loss of <laughs> Wainwright, that's a strike, may have been a little bit low, but Freeze is called out for a strikeout from Randy Wolf. But now you hear John Mozeliak talk about it, and obviously Tony La Russa, and they say you, you look back at this year in retrospect, the number one thing that uh, you look at is the loss of Wainwright, how tough that was. Yeah, and, and like you said, the first couple months, it looked like they were going to be able to get away with it. But as the season dragged on it just became a, a weakness um, but there's all what kinds of aspects you know all the blown saves you know the, the poor defense up the middle how many times that you have a double play ball that you don't get two outs you only get one extend the inning and and then uh, you know bad things happen. 0 oh 2 on Yadier Molina. He's hitting about 300 against Milwaukee this season. This the last couple days with just a little calf strain. He's another guy that I'm sure would love to finish above 300. He's at 294 overall. 0 oh 2 pitch into center field. Drops in for a hit. Yadier's had a very good year offensively, and but it's just something about. 300. I 
I mean, it just signifies that you're a legitimate hitter. 299, it just doesn't have the same ring. Do you remember when uh, Ryan Ludwig, his all star year, was at uh, 299? Yes. Final at bat, Tony didn't realize that and pulled him. Final at bat of the season. Right. Would have got a hit, he would have been over 300. Tony really felt bad about that. You know, do you start looking at the numbers that Ludwig put together that year, and we say it was a career year, and then you compare it to what Pujols may do this season, people say it's a down year. Yeah. And just Albert set the bar so high. That's right. Molina reads it. He's off to second, and he's out. Took a chance and got burned. You saw Alan Craig take advantage of the ball that got away from the catcher yesterday, but Yachty doesn't have the same speed and the ball didn't go as far away. And Kataris very took his time, just gunned him down. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Craig. You would think some way, somehow, he will have an important role with this team next year. So much of what the Cardinals may do this offseason, though, hinges on bringing back pools. And when do they sign that contract? If they do. Absolutely. You know, because Alan Craig is more a corner outfielder, but he also could play first base. You know, there's a lot of talk about bringing Berkman back. Three and two. What about Tony? Is I he just coming to back? Say, I think most believe that he does come back. Well, when you talk to him and you you ask about next year, you know he'll volunteer. We would do this or that, and, and well, you said the key word, we. Yes, that's what I meant. That uh, talks in terms of coming back. Sixteen years is a long time in one spot, but. Been managing for 33 years. He's within 50. I think he's 51 wins from tying second on the all-time win list. So you know he's going to manage again. The 3-2 is pulled foul. You wonder on a personal level just how frustrating and difficult this season was for him dealing with his ailment and not taking medication for the painful ailment that it is. He said he still has a little bit of the itching sensation there, but obviously the pain has subsided. Swing and a miss by Craig. Two strikeouts in the inning. And we head to the third. Braun, Fielder, and Green coming up.
to the BMW Drive for Team USA event and get behind the wheel of a BMW to show your support. And everyone on HP. Braun Fielder and Green. When's the last time, Al, you've been up top of the arch? Have you ever done it? I have done it, and once was enough. Me too. I mean, I, it was fine. First pitch strikes, Randy Wolf, seven for seven. Look, Westbrook, two for 11. Westbrook's already at 49 pitches. Out to center field, hammered by Braun. Robinson looks up. Way out of here. Two to nothing, Milwaukee. Number 27 for Ryan Braun. Ryan Braun trying to become the second Milwaukee Brewer ever to have be a 30 30 man. He's already over 30 steals, and now his 27th home runs helped that cause. He can flat out hit. Great player. And Plaza Tire Service, Exmo Cam, and just launched at 430 feet. Here's Fielder. They've got the rookie that you talked about hitting behind him first time up, the intentional walk, and you would figure that would be the case this afternoon. May not see a lot to hit. One ball, one strike. Big crowd is quiet right now. He leads the National League with those 107 RBIs and a 417 average against Westbrook. A dynamic, if you want to look at it this way, to the pool holes negotiations could be Prince Fielder, who is represented oh, by Scott Boris. And as we have seen, Scott Boris will wait a long time to get what he wants. And then there's some that believe that Albert Pujols' camp wouldn't want to sign until after Prince Fielder set the market. Exactly. Let him set the bar and then get an understanding of the players at his position over the last three or four years, what they make. Also, Albert Pujols' camp will tell you, though, he's on a, a different level than any of those players. My take is that Albert becomes a free agent, listens to the offers, and then unless somebody absolutely blows him away, if the Cardinals are you know, a little bit short, but within uh, the ballpark range, he comes back and signs here. If somebody goes crazy, he's gone. Popped up. Outfield grass, Terrio makes the catch. It's not happy that he popped up, but look at the hustle. Boy, you like to see that, don't you? Absolutely. Ran as hard as he could, and then he got pulled up when the ball was caught. Drops that ball, you know, you're standing at second base. Somebody else pouting, drop the ball, and they throw him out at first and get embarrassed. Green shoots one the opposite way. And it's a fair ball. Hops over the wall. Ground rule double. It's three doubles hit today by Milwaukee here in the first three innings. Friday night, 25,000 fans ages 16 and older receive a gray and pink knit scarf courtesy of Coca-Cola and Schnucks. It supports breast cancer awareness. Cardinals.com slash promotions to find out more. You know, Westbrook is really a good guy. And Tony will tell you that you know, at times that he's guilty of trying too hard. And you know he's a very quick worker. They've really tried to get him to slow up. Jerry Hairston. So far this year he just has gotten that pitch count up so high in all the starts. And like I say it's for a ground ball pitcher. 
it's hard to believe that he has a six point ERA in his home ballpark. In the next half hour, the shadows do become a factor at the plate. We've heard Lance Berkman talk about that recently that it's very difficult for the hitters to make that adjustment. Lance not playing today he has very poor numbers against uh, Randy Wolf, but Tony's saying he needs a day off. Lance is three for 32. Two balls, one strike on Hairston. At home, the ERA for Westbrook is near six. Still a little bit better on the road. His numbers on the road aren't bad. And both these starting pitchers are trying to win win number 12. Strikeouts are piling up for Westbrook. That's number six. Here's a look at the difference in what he's done at home as opposed to what we've seen on the road. Eight and three in a 3.65 ERA. Another one of the weaknesses of the Cardinals this season. There are only three games over 500 at home. They've won 36 games. Milwaukee is 50 and 19 at home. Two outs, runner at second base. We talked about it at the All Star break. We said that if Milwaukee was to win this division, they have to find a way to win on the road. And they've done that. And they play much better on the road in the second half. Mentioned earlier, they've won 13 of their last 16 away from home. And they started out 16 and 31 on the road. And overall, in the, since that time, they're 18 and 7. But even as you said gotten better in the last 16 games. And clearly Ron Renicki's ball club has the best record in the division. It's almost impossible to win your win your division if you don't have the best record. Two balls two strikes. Two outs runner at second. Swing and a miss. At seven strikeouts for Westbrook. Home run by Braun. It's a two run lead.
carsoup.com slash cardinals and send us your email the booth questions Shane Robinson Jake Westbrook and Raphael for for the Cardinals here in their half of the third trailing by two Ryan Braun with a home run his 27th of the year RBI number 95 long and painful re Return to the big leagues for Shane Robinson. You bet. For people that didn't hear about it in the minor leagues, had a collision with Andrew Brown in the outfield. Shattered bones in his face, near his eye, broke a finger, had a pin inserted in that. Long road back for Shane Robinson. Betancourt come in here, get that glove low, and then making the exchange. See how he's got it way back into the palm of his hand and then kind of let it slide out to the fingertips and naturally comes up with that foreseen grip that you throw a more straight and accurate throw to first base. Grip it. You don't do that, and you have a tendency to grip it on the side, and the ball will sail. Westbrook. Oh, what a play here. It's second by Hairston. Takes the hit away from Jake Westbrook. Two down, and it brings in for Cowell. Hyundai Fox Mo this time. Nice play by Hairston. See him out on the grass, backhands it, slides, and then push himself up. You can see the regular sunglasses and there's the old flip style Betancourt with the old style T plush with his own his own uh, style 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 <laughs> everything's a little different with him yeah for Kyle looks at a strike the old flip glasses aren't the most attractive but they work the best Curious to see what most of these uh, GMs around baseball think, and you see the shadows, how they could affect the hitter. But what they think the value is uh, for Kyle. He's a guy that's dealt with injuries the last uh, couple of seasons. We talked about his option. Hefty wanted $12 million, but could tear that up, have him come back for something else. A fly ball to Corey Hart. The Cardinals go quietly in their half of the third. Two to nothing, Milwaukee.
in Eski Betancourt. First pitch and a high fly ball out to left. Should stay in the ballpark. It will. Holiday makes the catch. Follow every Cardinals game through Game Connect on FoxSportsMidwest.com. As you watch the game on television, you can join the conversation about the game on Twitter, Track Trends, and Stats. Game Connect brought to you by Jack in the Box. And find it at FoxSportsMidwest.com. And a third inning now without uh, Jim Hayes. He's working hard on the pregame and prepping right now for the postgame. So he was unavailable for all you fans out there that were curious. I'm disappointed. As am I. But he has such responsibilities that he had to tend to those. There's a uh, Brandy Wolf, and you, know, you think about hosting that postgame show, and you've been on it a number of times, and Jim takes great pride in preparing for that. So he usually begins normally at about the bottom of the first, and from that point on, he is locked in. Locked in, but kind of hard to believe that he couldn't come and help us in the third. And not be able to concentrate on what's happening in the game. No question about it. Strikeout of Randy Wolf. That's number eight. You know, that's one away from tying his career high. Coca Cola in the Pasta House pennant Saturday, September 10th. Ages 15 and under receive a collectible Cardinals pennant and visit Cardinals.com for tickets. Again, $15 seats tomorrow and again on Wednesday. Top of the lineup, and here's Corey Hart. Eight strikeouts make you think that uh, Westbrook's got some pretty good movement today. And sometimes that, that really is a, a great indicator, and sometimes it gets him in trouble. That great movement that moves through the strike zone and out of the strike zone. Mentioned those shadows, and they're now out in front of the plate. So that pitcher's in bright sunlight, and then by the time the ball gets to you at the plate, it's very dark. Last time that you and I worked together was on Friday night, and what a great night that was. The annual this one is for you, for our troops in Afghanistan. A lot of people enjoyed that. You know, the game was was nice, but uh, it almost comes secondary to thanking the troops and then getting a little talk talk back and forth from the 1138 transportation company that's over in Afghanistan no! strikeout that's moving because that's the second time we've seen it get away from Yadier Molina nine strikeouts through four innings for Jake Westbrook. Cardinal baseball and you don't want to miss it. Mike is our esteemed producer. 
And that's the cat fight with Jim Hayes. Trivia contest, and you can see that tomorrow. It's the cat fight at 6.30 on our pregame show. Bray Council will take over at second base for Jerry Harrison. How about that? Nine strikeouts today for Westbrook. That ties his career high. He did it three previous times prior to this year, but the way he's pitching right now, you, I'm sure he's going to set a new career high. Ryan Terrio, Albert Pujols, and Matt Holliday. Terrio fly to center first time up. 2 nothing Milwaukee. Picked up an RBI base hit by Corey Hart in the second inning. Solo home run by Braun. That was in the third. You think uh, Harrison might have injured himself diving for that ball up the middle? I was thinking that, and that was off the bat of Westbrook. It was a hard hit ball and made a really good play on it, too. Box tracks brought to you by Missouri Lottery this half inning. And we gave you the call ups. I'm a little disappointed that Stavanoa, who doubled twice and drove in three runs to set a new Memphis single season record for RBIs with 109. I think he had like 28 home runs, 109 RBIs. But he's get the attention of some other organization. Yeah, and the Cardinals would have liked to have done that, but he was not available because of the 40 man roster. Correct. Was not on that, so was not available to be called up. And they had to you know, put uh, Lance Lynn on the 60 day disabled list to create room for Shane Robinson, who wasn't on it. A 2 2 pitch. Foul tip held on and a strikeout. Third of the afternoon for Randy Wolf. Mentioned out before how I talked to John Booch about Stabenow, and they said not only did he have great numbers, but they thought maybe the best part of his season is that here's a guy that's had a taste of the big leagues, doesn't make the club, goes down to the minor leagues, he's not on the 40 man, and doesn't pout. They said when you've got young players that come up and down, they see that, they see how a guy is acting. Sometimes that can have. As big an impact is is the numbers that he's putting up in the minor yeah, leagues. And I've seen I've seen guys get released for that mere fact that they're bad teammates for the young prospects. He said every day came to the ballpark. He was there early to help out. He'd go on the bullpen, do extra bullpen sessions with guys because of his catching background. They needed it. Well, that's 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 great and. You know the Cardinals will try and do whatever they can to help him get to. If somebody else can get him in the big leagues, they'll help out. Might probably would probably be a six-year minor league free agent now, and hopefully he can go someplace where he's got, you know, more of an opportunity. Here's a two-one. Who holds double down the left field line first time up? Two and two. But you know, you John Boots telling you about that. Next time, you know, when Stab knows playing career is over, you know, that could be a factor which could keep him in the, you know, make him uh, available as a coach or something, keep him in the organization because of what he, he just did. 2 2 pitch. Underneath it, pops it up. This may drop. Sliding catch made by Hart. And, the, and he's really battling the sun. Just look at how he looked up there. Not only the long run and everything, but you're sitting there running and looking up, battling the sun, not a cloud in the sky. That was not an easy play. Here's Matt Holiday with two outs. The wind is blowing from left to right. And it had a little tailing. Action on that, so that's a really good play by Hart. Long way to go. He was playing deep in the outfield. Here's Holiday, huge gap in left center. Seen had a lot of doubles there recently. Needs the ball club with 34. Off the end of the bat, popped into right, Corey Hart. Makes the catch. Randy Wolf is solid today. We move to the fifth. Morgan Braun and Fielder coming up.
trivia question. Name the only NL Central teams to win 100 plus games in a season since 1993. Formation of the division Cardinals, Astros. Cardinals did it a couple of times back to back years. 102 for Houston back in 98. AT&T trivia question. And really it's been Houston and St. Louis winning the division from 96 on until about 2007. Morgan is one for two. David Freeze playing in again. Hydra got a double his first time up hitting the ball between Freeze and the third base bag. Kind of pitching him away, letting him slap the ball that way again. I wonder what Carpenter thinks of some of these antics of Niger Morgan. Well, the one thing I know is he can play. Couple of hops to his short for Cow, fires it to first for the out. That brings in Braun, who's one for two with a homer. Hairston, we understand, left the game with neck soreness, so that's why he's out and Council is in. Milwaukee, you would get the feeling, Al, they would be a dangerous team come postseason play because of what they can do at home. Well, not only that, but the pitching. The pitching, and then they could shorten the game with the double closers at the end. You got pretty good setup guys getting you to K Rod and Axford. I was just wondering if Harrison met that uh, that young lady, that 75 young year old young lady that came and visited the booth last uh, homestead. No, because he has a sore neck. We had a young lady, as you mentioned, Al, that uh, really wanted to meet Al. And for <laughs> fans that don't know, Al had full neck surgery, if you want to call it little, and she decided to give you a big old hug. Starting with the neck. Yeah, but took it off. <laughs> <laughs> you can visit Bush Bash prior to every Friday home game in the Ford Plaza. And this Friday, it's Brian Jordan. For details and future player appearances, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. Good to see Brian down at uh, fantasy camp and also involved with the Cardinals a little bit now that his playing career is through. Has authored a couple of children's books. That's right. Fielder is 0 for 1 with an intentional walk back in the first. You never know who you'll run into up here in the booth. Brown ball to Pujols. Westbrook covering the bag at first. Freeze. Molina and Craig coming up. It's 2 0.
and St. Louis in game number two. We'll come your way at 6.30, pregame show, Gallardo and Loesch. Good matchup. Two to nothing as we move to the bottom of the fifth here at Bush. And it's Freeze, Molina, and Craig. Jake Westbrook has struck out nine today. Nine through five innings. Allowed just six hits. Randy Wolf has allowed just two base hits. Double by Pujols. And a single by Yadier Molina. He has struck out three in the 0-1 pitch to David. Hit out to deep right center field. Morgan back. And it's off the wall. David Fries with a leadoff double. It looked like Nigel Morgan was in position. He was going to make a acrobatics catch up against the wall. But at the last second, he pulled off to get the, the carom off the wall. David misses a home run by just inches. I'm getting bounced at the base. It's kind of funny the way Niger approached there is it looked like he thought that a ball was going to carry out and would come off the bat of a right hander kind of in a, in a slicing fashion. Here's Yadier Molina. The wind is whipping a little bit towards right field. We saw that on that high pop up by Pujols. And off a right hander's bat going the opposite field, you're going to see that ball tail. Sure. Looked like that's what the, the case was there. Cardinals 0 for 1 with runners in scoring position so far this afternoon. Shadows become a little more tricky in another few minutes when you see that sunlight behind the umpire. I see that little bit of the little window that's going to how dark it is at home plate. See Randy Wolf not happy at all with Molina stepping out. Looking back into the home plate umpire. But you can go ahead and throw the ball. So how a pitcher can hurt himself is when he starts to go to the plate and then stop. So just go ahead and execute a throw. Howdy had the last couple of days off, Dan, and most of the time when he gets a couple of days off, he usually has a big offensive day. Something the Cardinals wanted to concentrate on was trying to give him more time this year off because of what you noted. He comes back and really puts together a solid game or two after the day off. Molina hits it to the right side. Off a fielder. Council can't come up with it. Everybody's safe. And Yachty is two for two. I gave him an error on this ball. It's right in the middle of the glove and then deflects towards the second baseman. So it's our Hyundai Fox Exmo cam. So not second hit. Now Alan Craig chance to do some damage here. Robinson on deck. Wouldn't be surprised if that one has changed. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. In the dirt and blocked. Inning started with a double by Freeze to right center. Molina reaches on an air. Runners at the corners. 2 0 Milwaukee. Very least, you want to sacrifice fly. A 
Craig bounces into a double play. Six, four, three. Run scores. No RBI on the play. David Free scores, and it's 2 1. Brings in Shane Robinson with two down. Anything but that. And of course, we've said that all season long as the Cardinals have hit into the most double plays in the major leagues. Robinson grounded out to short first time up 0 1 pitch. We talked about it yesterday out and on Friday night too. how the Cardinals the positive is there's a lot of runners on the negative is they're not doing a lot once they're getting on it's very much station to station. Yeah, there's somewhat of a sore spot with Tony because fans. Broadcasters, us included, <laughs> would like to see a little more movement on the base paths. Uh, Tony went through a phase, especially when we were in Pittsburgh, and that one home stand, and then we went to Pittsburgh. Every time he started a runner, they hit into a line drive double play. And if he didn't start the runner, then they hit into a ground ball double play. First walk issued by Wolf. Extends the inning to Jake Westbrook. Cardinals did have some activity in the bullpen, but that was just in case this spot was up and some damage could be done. And the double play kind of took that option away. Jake Westbrook, 116 hitter, he had the one home run, the grand slam, his last start against Wolf. And hard to believe, never considered much of a hitter. But he is now second in the National League in RBIs by National League pitchers. But one swing of the bat will help you out. But he had four, and then you add his grand slam, he's at eight now. Two outs and a runner at first. One ball, one strike. Westbrook nearly picked up a base hit his first time up. Took a good play by Hairston to take away the hit. Two or three times already, Randy Wolf has just stared back in. Home plate umpire. Not real happy with his own. Two and two. Dan Bellino is behind the plate today. Randy Wolf, his brother Jim, a major league umpire for many years now. Jim Wolf can umpire. He can be on the crew when his brother's playing, but he can't be on behind the plate. Wouldn't you think, though, Major League Baseball would try to make sure that he's not on those series? I would think so, too. Not to say that he would cheat or anything like that, but no reason to even have cause for concern. Cardinals get on the board. It's 2 1 as we head to the sixth.
tie the game, but the Cardinals answer with four in the ten and win in Milwaukee 13 to nine. That's our Schnooks this date in history, September 5th, 1999. A little personal history today for Jake Westbrook in strikeouts. Not quite. He's only tied to his career high, but want to see him uh, establish a new one. You can just see how that movement, look at that breaking ball, guys paint in the corner there, then the dip and the sinking action. He's really his. And he's mentioned right now a couple times that Molina couldn't even catch it. Three time gold glove winner. Give an indication move, but but he also is able to throw him out at first base. So he's tied his career high of nine strikeouts, fourth time he's done that. And you would think with 88 pitches, he's got a good shot of setting a new a new standard. Here's Taylor Green. Strike on the outside corner underway here in the top of the sixth. Two to one Milwaukee. And with the shadows trying to televise a game back home to you. It can be a little tough on the cameras and what the guys are doing in the truck in particular Larry Mason he's working hard so great work Larry we appreciate it as always. Chance here for freeze high throw and out. Pujols able to get it back on the bag. Well key shot there too it looked like. Yeah. I mean his head pulled off that pitch. And Everything was going to go. There's Albert with it goes up in the air, but clearly comes down ahead of the runner. And it brings in Craig Council. He's a class act. He's from the Milwaukee area, but he's been on two world championship teams. His dad actually used to work for the Milwaukee Brewers. So he grew up. Going to their old ballpark. Some chilly nights there. Oh yeah. Fox tracks brought to you by Chevy this half inning. Council, who is their franchise leader in pinch hits and pinch hit appearances, I got off to a horrendous start. He was 0 for 45. Didn't get his first hit till into August. Tied two others. One was Dave Campbell. Remember Dave Campbell? Yeah. Soup, soup best telling everybody how to hit, you know. When <laughs> What's he doing now? I, you know, we, I don't know. I haven't seen him I haven't broadcast either. at all this year. George Kataris will be the hitter. And you can follow the Cardinals with MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or BlackBerry. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit Cardinals.com for details. A pair of strikeouts for the Milwaukee catcher. And he looks at a ball low and away. One oh pitch. Round ball right side. Pools out at second. No. Trying to be a little too quick with his hands. Try to get the return throw to first base and didn't hold on to it. So right there, right at the see where look where his eyes are. Is it hit at the top of his webbing of his glove? And then he's ready to reach in and return the, th the throw to first base and just trying to be a little too quick, didn't really look it into the glove. Ineski Betancourt, a double in the second inning and also flied out to left. It's an air on for Cowell, fielder's choice, and Pujols picks up an assist on that play. A 2 1 game. All the ground balls, you're thinking a double play again here. 
Instead, it's a base hit out to left. Council being waved in. The throw by Holiday. Here it comes. Not in time. Council scores to make it three to one. Fifty sixth RBI for Betancourt. And Westbrook looking for a ground ball. Strong throw by Holiday. Good deke by Freeze. They hold the runner, Kataris, at second base. Make him think that he was cutting the ball off and yet let it go through to see if there'd be a play at the plate. Now Westbrook was looking for a ground ball. He got one and just found a hole. Here's Randy Wolf, one for two. Single back in the second inning. Struck out in the fourth. Swinging away here, and that's off of Pujols out into center field. Bases are loaded. A rocket right at Pujols, who was playing in, anticipating a bunt. Could have been a lot worse. We've seen Albert many a time make this play, but think about here as a fielder. That ball's coming out of the shadows right there and gets on top of you probably a lot quicker than you may think. So Albert tries to backhand it and it goes off his wrist. Derek Willowquist, the acting pitching coach, out to talk to Westbrook and the base is loaded and it looks like Dixon. Brandon Dixon, who came up and made the start in game three of the Milwaukee series. He was warming up in the bullpen. Inning started with a ground out by Green. Council a base hit. Fielder's choice air on the shortstop for Kyle. Betancourt base hit. RBI Wolf a base hit. So base is loaded. Top of the lineup. And here is Corey Hart. And Wolf is probably wondering what do I have to do to get an RBI. He doesn't have an RBI on the season and he's a pretty good hitter. He's two for three today. Swing and a miss by Hart. Now oh, it's tough. Yeah, the hitter is now in the sunshine. Yeah, so he goes pitcher in the sunshine, then deep shadows all the way until the ball gets right to the front of the plate, and then it's back in the sunlight again. 0 oh and 2. Corey Hart has just hit. Cardinal pitching all season long. That's a good play by Yachty. It's two blocks in a row by Yachty. That one a little tougher. Two and two. So far out in front of the plate, you just don't know what kind of bounce you're going to get. So good weight shift and guess correctly. Pitch number 105 on its way. Spoiled by Hart. We'll do it again at two and two. Hart does have an infield hit and an RBI that was in the second. He's also struck out twice. Big at bat right here. Bases loaded in a 2-2 count. 
three one you're still right in the ball game base hit and they probably score two. Could be a double play out at second on the first double play. Boy, did he need that? Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. And for a limited time, Jack's really big chicken sandwich combo is back for only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. You got a brick? I do. I do too. I do. I don't know where it's at, but me neither. <laughs> it's somewhere. Yeah. It is fun to see all the people that uh, come to the ballpark early and are looking for their brick. Yes. A lot of out of town people have done that. The personal messages that they have on those that was offered when the ballpark was built. They also have some around the stand the man statue as well. Raquel trying to bunt his way on and pushes it foul. Big double play started by Rafael for Kyle. By the way, the run that scored last inning, top half of this inning, I should say, was unearned against Westbrook. Did you pay for your brick? Well, that's debatable too, Al. <laughs> I need to look. Um, I did not. The Jameson family gave me a brick. You can only imagine what it says. Something about I witnessed your best golf game. Mm -hmm. This is your buddy from San Francisco. One one pitch two for Cowell. And I was referring to your golf game that day. My 76. That's right. Putt putt course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your uh, your score that day. Uh, 176. <laughs> that day. I played out of my mind. Three and one. Randy Wolf has had the Cardinals off balance all afternoon. Only three hits allowed. Well, Jake Westbrook might have to wait for another start to set a new career high in strikeouts. He equaled is high of nine for the fourth time. Kyle McClellan is throwing and Westbrook is just over 100 pitches thrown. 
And it's a walk two for Cow. So here you go. The time run will come to the plate here in the bottom of the sixth. That's why it was so important to keep this a, a 3 1 game. Get one man on, then you're always talking about the potential tie and run coming to the plate. How do you think Milwaukee would fare against the Phillies? And we may see that in postseason play. All I know is Dusty Baker told me right before they came in to St. Louis over the weekend, he said that they got swept by Philadelphia and he said they are just monsters. So where Hunter Pence said when he got over to the Phillies, and obviously a much different feeling coming from Houston, a team that was losing game after game. He said, in Houston, we get so excited after one win. And with this ball club, it's not so much excitement, it's expected. Yes, there's really a big difference. You know, when you come to the ballpark knowing you're going to win every day, and of course, what Dusty was saying, they started out with. You know, he said, you know, Cueto's my best pitcher. He goes, he told Walt Jock, he said, well, what would it be like to have five Cuetos? He said, we got to the point where we were dying to see Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know it's pretty tough. One oh pitch. Carl sitting on 298 career steals. Big Cardinal fan Bruce Dickinson watching the ball game today, feeling a little bit under the weather. Get well, and we'll see you at the ballpark soon. They boo, they don't want to see him throw over again. This is one of those combinations where we could see maybe some action on the base pass, so the call was. Fooled by Randy's move, he had him going back to the bag when he delivered to the plate. It's one of the better moves that we see in the National League. All you have to do is really pay attention to that run over there. Bury your looks, step off, throw over a little bit, take the life out of the spring out of the, the legs of a base stealer. And it's a 1 1 pitch. Could be a double play ball out at second. Double play. Second double play. The Cardinals have hit into that one four six three. Keith from Moscow Mills, Missouri. Does the visiting team bring their own bat boys, or does the home team provide them? Home team provides them. Right. Usually, some of the kids that work in the clubhouse and. Don't think that those kids have a easy job either. I mean they they work they work some long long hours. The only time they get to rest is when they have the bat boy duties. Bat boy duties changed as far as age because of the aforementioned Dusty Baker. <laughs> right. His son Darren you might recall in the World Series when he was managing the Giants. Pujols pops it up. Fielder is over, runs out of room. There's a play at the plate, and runners are coming around on a play in the World Series, and JT Snow picks up Darren basically by the back collar of the collar, yeah. As he crosses home plate, and it's one of the great shots ever of Dusty Baker. Hands up, relieved, and Major League Baseball instituted an age rule for bat boys. Uh, be very difficult to to be a bad boy too without uh, having a driver's license in a car because of late hours they keep and you know they could be working well after a couple hours after the game off the end of the bat and the catch is made by Braun that sends us to the seventh Milwaukee with the lead it's three one.
throughout the uh, entire homestand on Sunday, September 11th. Tickets in the Legends uh, Club are only $60. Champions Club at $75. Well, that's a great deal. You're kidding me. When's this? Next, Next Sunday. Sunday, the 11th. 60 for the champion or for the uh, Legends Club, 75 for champions. Our Mid America Chevy dealers called to the bullpen as Kyle McClellan and rudely greeted. Will it leave the ballpark? It will. Major Morgan. with his fourth home run multi hit game and you can see him a little excited around there and you hear a little smattering of applause as some of the Milwaukee Brewer fans are getting excited magic number is 13 coming into action today Braun is homer today remember it was McClellan that gave up the home run on Friday night that eventually proved to be the game winner for Cincinnati Tailing action on that fastball. Here's a fly ball into center field. Robinson makes the catch. It's been an exciting year for McClellan and also frustration too. Wanted to stay in the rotation, got off to a great start. Really one of those learning years for him, I'm sure. He won seven games as a starter. He made 17 starts. He picked up three wins out of the bullpen. So he's right now 10 and 6. ERA right at four. Where is his fate next year? Back in the bullpen, or he did first three years, or back in the rotation where he'd like to be. You have the makings when healthy of a really good bullpen. The big question is who's the guy at the end? And that really cost the Cardinals this year. For Kyle will show off the arm and gets Fielder hustling down the line. Look at that hustle yeah. by the big man. I mean, he's trying to show, well, he's auditioning for Major League Baseball for a job next year. Well, Milwaukee for the last couple of years have tried to sign him to a long term contract, but he's resisted, become a free agent. He's trying to hit 300 this year. He's already got. 31 home runs and leads the National League with 107 RBIs. The youngest to ever hit 50. How bad is it, Al, though, that we point out when yes. a guy is hustling when he's supposed to be doing that every day anyway? That's the best part about it, you know, is and it's also the, the shame that we have to point out somebody when they hustle and give them a lot of credit. When all you got to do is run hard four times hey. at night. O2 pitch to Taylor Green. Round ball. Who holds? To McClellan. Gives up a home run to Morgan. Time to stretch. 4 1 Milwaukee.
times are waiting. Grab some buds. By Bank of America, where ATM deposits are as easy as an infield fly. No deposit slip, no envelope with Bank of America, member FDIC. And by AT&T. Here's Matt Holliday. Cardinals trailing 4-1. to one. It's been one of those years, too, where we haven't seen a lot of comeback wins for the Cardinals, especially late. I agree with you. You know, it just... I think the Cardinals actually have more than we think because it just seems like it's been a long time. Since. Yeah. So I was talking about, you know, that was an important stat when Albert was at at second base and two outs in the first. And he's only allowed seven hits to the fourth place hitter all season long. And the funny thing is, is he's there's three others that are better than him. Holiday, a little tardy with that swing and a strikeout for Wolf. His fifth strikeout. But the Cardinals only have three hits. And the one run they've scored was an unearned run. No, it was earned because no unearned. So five strikeouts for Wolf. One of those hits that he allowed. Was a double to freeze to right center back in the fifth. Backhanded, Betancourt, two away. Westbrook goes six innings, nine hits, three runs, two of those earned, nine strikeouts, 107 pitches. Little bouncer slowly hit to third. And that'll do it for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the seventh.
property of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Brandon Dixon, and it's our call to the bullpen. Brought to you by Chevy. Called up earlier, made a couple relief appearances. Four shutout innings in those two relief appearances. Then he started against Milwaukee last week. Wasn't a real long outing, but he ate up some innings early. Tony said it was the second most nervous he's ever been in a decision that he's made wearing a Cardinal uniform. Starting Dixon on that Thursday game when the Cardinals were going for a sweep against Milwaukee. Well, because they, that was Carpenter's normal turn. And, you know, kind of a must win game, and you have Carpenter available. Milwaukee thought that it was all a floor. And they, our buddy Brian Anderson, in the eighth inning of Wednesday's game, said, well, Dixon is scheduled, but I won't believe it until I see it. So they really thought that Carpenter was going to start that game and Tony playing a little gamesmanship. If you're wondering, he said the most nervous he's ever been was putting Albert Pujols out in left field when his elbow was messed up and couldn't really throw the baseball. Renteria was at shortstop and Edmonds at center every day. So those two would have to go out and get the ball from Pujols to throw it back in. Medical team said, I don't think it's a real good idea. So called Walt Jockety and said, This is what I'm going to do. Walt said, Good luck. <laughs> and yes, it worked. He's here. First uh, plate appearance, by the way, that day. Pools hit a three run homer. Slap the other way and foul. Some kind of run with Tony LaRusa. Love him or hate him here in St. Louis. I think a lot of people, once Tony started doing his radio show on Sunday, they really saw a different side of him. I think if anybody could go to a banquet that he speaks at, they would be, and if you've never seen him speak, they would be shocked. Because this is the sight that most fans see the dark glasses. Stoic, emotionless, uh, list. But then you see him in a setting where he's he's doing questions and uh, answer sessions, and he's fantastic. Very glib, you know, lighthearted. Makes fun of himself, you know. He, it's just a, a different perspective that a lot of fans or media don't have a chance to see. I think also, when, you know, when. Fans got an opportunity to ask him the questions, and then you see the the thoughtful and extensive answer that he would give. They started understanding. Well, this guy really does care about winning. And at times, such a, a polarizing figure here in town. But you get that when you have a franchise that's as loved. Like the Cardinals are by this fan base and a fan base that understands the game, understands about winning and the tradition of this uniform. Base hit into center for Betancourt. Would you agree with that? Yes. Betancourt is third hit. Ball up the middle and it gets to the grass and see a little bit of the snaking action is something we noticed today for the you know first time I ever recall. They turned on the sprinklers before the game and then they had three guys with hose out there in the outfield. They really watered down a portion right off the mound as I'm sure these. Searing temperatures have played havoc with with this new grass surface. I'm talking to Bill Finley. He was saying the one thing that has helped 
extremely high temperatures, but the cool nights has really helped them out with the grass. Knowing Bill, he's probably been up for just about all those nights worrying about his precious baby, which well, is this playing surface. And it kind of told me that they would have the the arch cut back into the field, but it, they say it's so hard on the grass the way they have to mow that in. And I'm sure it's just grass not uh, thick enough. Scoreless inning by Dixon. It's 4 1. And it's four to one Milwaukee. Niger Morgan. First pitch from Kyle McClellan on our Nissan drive of the game moments ago. That was in the top of the seventh. Right, first ball fastball and he jumped all over it. Good inning by Dixon. It's like Clayto is warming up for the Cardinals. About this three of the last four starts by Randy Wolf at this ballpark. He's gone at least into the eighth inning. Well, that's it, Dan. I mean, that really, when you talk about Milwaukee, almost consistently they will put out a, a quality starter. He said Markham yesterday just had the young, it was just experience versus the young hitters of Houston. He shut them out. It was a combined shutout. Had two more relievers come in, but said he just put on a put on a show to those young guys. Didn't even know what was happening to him. There's Alan Craig, struck out and grounded out. Randy Wolf with three hits allowed. And what this is his fourth time seeing the Cardinals since early August. I believe August 3rd. Now Tony did not want Edwin Jackson pitching against them for like the fourth time. But if you can pitch, you can pitch. There's a change up there. Great location down the way. And as you always talk about Allen. Anybody that's around this game, it's a game of adjustments from start to start. Fly ball into right. Hart backs up, makes the catch. Crowd today of 42,043. 42-043. So over 42,000 here today. And again, $15 seats available for the ball game tomorrow and on Wednesday. Shane Robinson is 0 for 1. Gerald Laird has moved to the on deck circle. Popped up, fielder is over and runs out of room.
one pitch breaking ball. Talking about Bronson Arroyo yesterday and the fact that he changes speed so well. Well, you just seeing it now from the other side, Randy Wolf. That just floats in there at 66 miles an hour. Now they have kind of a contest in Milwaukee to see who could throw the slowest breaking ball. Foul ball. I believe 66 is about the lowest that any of the starters have gotten to. Really never has been much trouble. Three innings and single digits. Any one particular great pitch, it was just a combination of keeping you off balance. Al, that pitch count includes a nine pitch first at bat of the game by Furcal. So, right, factor that into the equation of just how good he has been. He does not have a complete game this year. A 2 2. It's another fly ball. Niger Morgan is there. You see all these fly balls gives you an indication too that guys are out in front off balance. It seems to be a pretty effortless performance here by Randy Wolf. Free and easy. Well, after all the heat, you know, you just enjoy the cool 70 degrees. Gerald Laird going to pitch in here. Guy with the best success of any of the Cardinals is really uh, Corey Patterson, a left-handed batter. What does that tell you? Laird hits it fair inside the first base line. Digging for two as Hart cuts it off. Only the fourth base hit for the Cardinals today. It's three straight games that Laird has hit into. He caught the last two, and now he's three for his last eight. Gerald Laird with a double, safe at second, safe and secure, New York life. So two out base hit, and here's for Kyle. It's four to one, so clearly you're still within striking reach here, but with only four hits. Seems like you're about 10 runs back. Well, the Cardinals hit into two double plays. They lost a man trying to you know, advance on a ball that got away from the catcher. They've only stranded two runners to this point. One pitch, two for Cowell. Oh, and two. Walk back in the sixth. He's flied out. He's also grounded out. Cowell 12 for 50 with two home runs off of Randy Wolf. Oh, for three with runners in scoring position today. <laughs> Two and two. Got activity in their bullpen in case Randy's getting a little tired. Terry on deck, and then you'd see Albert Pools. Rodriguez, right hand warming up. The 
Kyle has worked it full. Started off with that long at bat. Maybe he can finish him off here in this inning. I know that Tony did not want to use Berkman against Randy Wolf because of his career numbers, but if you get the tying run on, he'd have to be thinking at least about that. There's K Rod who's ready to come in. He's the one guy that with one swing of the bat could tie it up. Three two knocked down by Wolf. Makes the play for Kyle is retired and that sends us to the ninth. It's four to one Milwaukee. Jim Hayes standing by. Michael Clayto takes over for the Redbirds. IERA in his two appearances. This is the right hander picked up from Seattle in the Brendan Ryan deal. In recall for the third time. And remember, they made his major league debut, and that's where he gave up all the runs. But at that time, you know, he could, he could hit triple digits, but they were turning that stuff around on him. Next inning, he pitched. He threw in a couple breaking balls, and and he got by fine. You know, he, he was called up from Double A the first time. He has been. He's pitched at four levels this year: A, Double A, Triple A, and the big leagues. And he has been starting most recently at Memphis. He did go down and tell. I relayed this story to you. Right. You know, tell some of his teammates. He said, "Boy, they can, they can hit the fastball at the major <laughs> league level. This is a guy that can hit triple digits. You've got to be able to incorporate the off-speed pitches." For Kyle, backs up just a bit, and makes the play. And not only incorporate those pitches, but throw them for strikes. Uh, you know, he used to. Throw 98 miles an hour, you put a little intimidation factor in there. But whether his ball is dead straight, you know, they turn it around on him pretty good. So it is important for him to have those secondary pitches. Morgan with a home run last time up off of Kyle McClellan. That pitch at 97 miles an hour.
sure what that was. It said 92. One one pitch. There's 99. They also felt that Plato was falling off a little bit, not finishing his pitches towards the plate. Which should give you a little increased velocity. Two and two. I'm sure he's just following Gerald Laird, who's doing the catching now, but we haven't seen anything other than the fastball, have we? No. There it is again, and he strikes him out 99 miles an hour. He didn't look like he's, he exerts himself, does he? No, no 99. And where Mott, you know, is, you know he's full out when he throws the ball. Must be a good test here with Brian Braun. Leaving the National League and hitting. Home run today. One for four. Hits it out to right and it drops in for a base hit. Alan Craig came on that ball and closed on it, but then decided he'd better play it conservatively. Two outs. But you have to face Fielder. Tension to walk back in the first. He's 0 for 3. Terrio playing short right field. There's kind of what you're talking about falling a little bit too much off to the side. Terrio playing short right field and recall a shortstop. Pretty close behind the second base bag. You can see power against power right here. He centers one up. Watch out. Now you don't really have to swing hard. Just, just make good solid contact. Center the ball and the velocity of Plato will do all the work. Big strong guy like Fielder too. I think Fielder would doesn't really know how to swing softly though. We haven't seen it if it's happened. No. I have to be intrigued with this power arm. And once again, like you said, this was compensation for Brendan Ryan. And Brendan, I saw, got his average up to about 260 plus, and then went on the DL for a while with a shoulder problem. Three and one. Brendan want taking in this game. Not many of those around anymore, are there? No. Nope. I miss Brendan Ryan. I liked him. Three and two. Now throw him your curveball now on three two. Might fall down. Swing. Fastball blew it by him. Bottom of the night rolls in and we come back. It's 4 1 Milwaukee.
do it against the Milwaukee Brewers closer John Axford 40 saves and 42 opportunities. He came on to the scene last season. Trevor Hoffman the all time save leader was struggling. Axford saved the day and he just put an even better season on this year. Axford. 66 appearance. Pitched a scoreless ninth inning on Friday at Houston for notching his 40th save of the season. And McCoy is going to be catching this flamethrower. Skip Schumacher. Skip 0 for 3 facing Axford. Very good numbers as a pinch hitter. Six for 11 is a pinch hit of the best of the Cardinals. So Schumacher is the pinch hitter for Terrio. And Pujols and Holiday. Final hope for the Redbirds that pitch at 95. Well, you talked about it earlier, the one two punch that they have in their bullpen. Back in with K Rod, former Met Angel, and then Axford. So Casey McGee goes in at third base. McCoy back behind the plate are the defensive changes. April 18th, the last blown save for this right hander. I'm sure you have. An appreciation for that look. Oh yeah. He saved 24 games last season, the most ever by a Brewers rookie. He was 24 for 27. And then this year he's 40 of 42. He got released by the Yankees in 2007, and then he worked as a cell phone salesman. At Walmart and Best Buy. High fly ball in the center. At the Tommy John surgery in 04. When he was at uh, originally drafted by Seattle, but chose to go to the Notre Dame, pitched in the O2 College World Series as a freshman, and then he had that Tommy John surgery, returned to Notre Dame, and pitched only three innings during the O5 season. But he was signed with the Yankees, and then released. One ball, one strike. Pujols doubled first time up. Since then, he has flied out and popped out. Albert is 0 for 6. Three strikeouts against this hard thrower. It's almost a, a question now who hasn't had Tommy John surgery? Well, you know, a lot of organizations, like I said, Axford had it in college. Remember, the Cardinals drafted a, a player a few years ago out of Illinois that third round, and then he had surgery, and they, they knew he was going to need surgery. <laughs> and they go, hey, he's got it out of the way. We didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> well, players do respond differently, and you hope that Wainwright is. Ready to roll come opening day. Oh, I, I don't think there's any doubt, especially when you talk to Adam. He's itching to go. There's a broken bat popped up. Second baseman, Council, two away. 
Let's turn to our player of the game. Presented by Budweiser, Randy Wolf. Eight innings, four hits, a run, it was earned. Walked two, struck out five, over 100 pitches. And again, Al, very effective today. Just has that knack of knowing how to pitch, keep people off balance, and shut down the Cardinals' offense with just four hits. Two outs, nobody on for Holiday. Holiday one for six off the extra. Lance Bergman is two for four off him. Down to their final strike. First time in a while, a little more fair for the hitters as the shadows of on out to the outfield. Little bouncer left side deep in the hole. Betancourt nice play game over. And Milwaukee takes the first game of the series but a score of four to one. Magic number down to 13 for Milwaukee. Post game show coming up next.